Hello, this is Matt Overwine from the Office of Instructional Design at Northern Kentucky University, and I'm here today to explain to you how to use this HTML slash CSS slash PHP form that we've been using for contest submissions, for surveys, and a few different things. Um, the great thing about it is you have just this HTML type form that uses PHP to send contest submissions or whatever to, um, to multiple users, multiple email recipients, that kind of thing. So today, um, we're not going to really be explaining too much about how to use PHP, HTML, or CSS specifically. Um, you can look at some of the other tutorials for that, but this is how to manipulate the code that we have and that we're going to put on Google Code by the end of this. So first, let me go ahead and uh, show you the, the general website uh, that we've been using recently. Um, this is for something that the dean wanted us to put up, that uh, faculty get to submit some uh, student learning opportunity or student learning outcomes in uh, for our college. So basically the teachers would go and they'd write a little bit about what they thought the students should learn and then they could submit it and then it emails it to uh, the email we had set up to collect all the data. So um, of course th this is an 800 by 600 resolution so you can kind of see that it's a little cramped whereas normally you'd be looking at it at a much larger size. So it's pretty basic uh, styling, nothing too fancy but uh, also just not some flat HTML. Uh, also, we had something that what we originally base, based this off of. We've learned a little bit over the years, of course. And this is our original form, which has a whole different uh, functionality to it. Similar, but also it has a, um, a way to attach a file. So we will give you guys a hold, or give you guys both of those files so you can look at them and explore them. So um, first, I'm going to open up the files in Dreamweaver and talk a little bit about them. You can use, of course, whatever you want once you get the uh, files. All right. So really, we only have two files to talk about, um, and then three if you want to consider the, C the CSS uh, one of the one of the uh, files. So the original one that we made uh, was a little more complicated, so we'll start with the newer one. Um, as you can see, this is kind of your standard looking kind of HTML document. Um, there are a few different div tags that we use for styling, and then uh, really you have your PHP marked by the um, marked by the question mark as usual, and there are a few error checking things up front because sometimes you don't want someone to be able to get past a certain point without, you know, filling out a few different things. So um, this area here at first is really designed to um, check errors. So it's, it's, check, it's checking for the contest. It's checking uh, the name. It's just checking a few different things. Actually, I think it says contest there, but that's from the old form. It's really checking their tenure status. So it checks to see if certain areas are blank and then or at the base state. And then it makes sure that they've changed it to the important information so that we can keep track of that. So after, um, after that, in this format, there is the main function that we use, which I'll scroll down to it here, is the, uh, the at mail function, as you can see highlighted here. So it has four different uh, variables that we need to worry about. And if you're not familiar much with PHP, you just have to know that uh, generally a uh, dollar sign says uh, that's a variable. So we have to make sure all these different things are filled out in our form. So if we go back to the, uh, the PHP uh, code up here, you can see that the to variable is, of course, some fictional uh, awesome at gmail.com that I created. Of course, it was my email before because I was collecting the data. So already you can see that that variable is pretty easy to, uh, to modify in there. It's just hard-coded at this point because we don't want them to choose or to see where the, their submissions are going. So you see two there and then two here. That's already one variable taken care of. Uh, if we look for the subject, well, that's also hard-coded in there. That's the SLO submissions. So that all of them, that way I could actually make a filter in my email so that anything with that, uh, with that, with that uh, subject would automatically put, be put in a, in a similar folder. So um, next we have the actual message that is contained in the email. This is a little bit different, um, but this is pretty easy still. So if we look at this, here's a message, but there's, you'll notice that there's our there are many lines of this variable. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to have a, you know, a general email format. So you kind of see where you know, a submission has been received. Their information was as follows. So we have some returns and some, uh, some spaces in here. And so these slash R's, I believe, are the returns. And that will create a return so it's not one big line that just continually goes. This faculty type is just a uh, just regular type that's not really code that's just you know something you'll see in the email but then you also see these variables in here and these posts come from the HTML code um, that you will see below 
So these these specific variables are coming from the HTML code. And I'll go ahead and show you that real quick, where they're coming from. So this is the post, and this is the fact type. Well, that's going to come from the HTML code down here. And you can see this starting to pop up. There's some form information here. Do, 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 do. Let me see if I can show you the uh, exact point. You see the PHP ends right here, and then just becomes regular uh, HTML at that point. You see a paragraph, you know, pretty standard stuff. Um, and in this div tag here, ha opened up the PHP again. So this is more stuff that you're not actually going to see on the website. And then this is the form. So um, the fact type that we were talking about is this right here. You know, you ha you can set your options here and so we did we had the tenure status which is you know what's the base thing that's going to be in there and then uh the non-tenure track tenure track and tenure were the three options so the error checking thing that i was talking about originally is uh checking to make sure that this is not just tenure status i believe so if we scroll back up to that error checking yes if if the posted fact type is tenure status then it's going to display in the errors column that you forgot to select your faculty status so in a way we're just making sure that someone's just not leaving that blank so in that option there it just makes sure tenure status doesn't stay and then um, so say they chose tenure well that's going to be displayed up here in the actual message fact type this would all be replaced with their tenure status and so you would actually know what tenure status they were rather than just it saying tenure status um, so all of these pretty much function the same way. And for this specific example, we it didn't matter how many SLOs, you know, student learning outcomes that they posted, they just needed to post one. So up in my error handling again, you see that I only have one checking, one check to see if they filled out one SLO. So SLO one is just a section within the HTML code slash PHP code. And uh, as long as they fill out the first box, they're fine. It's not going to ask them to do any more. So there's, there's three different boxes here that it's checking for. And those boxes, once again, are down here in the HTML. So um, it's checking to see the college name. It's checking to see the tenure status. And it's checking to make sure just the first one is filled out. Um, and in design, you know, you have the what you see is what you get kind of editor. I don't really trust it too much. But uh, just for generality, we'll look at this. Because it's loading up a little bit here. Nothing fancy, of course. And... Um, you can see that if it were to bring that down, that would give us all the different uh, tracks of tenure. There's the college name. And so it's just checking those three to make sure they're not empty or in the original state. And then it doesn't care if these last three are even filled out. And then when you hit submit, you post them, and that's when the variables get set. So, um, you know, it's not too complicated, and I understand where people might get a little lost. But uh, with, with those things there, you can build and you can change this, this, this format pretty easily. And you can notice that these IDs will collate and actually keep the names the same, too, just to make it easier on me. But the ID is what you really have to worry about. You'll see SLO1, call, call name, and I believe uh, fact type are all the, very, the IDs of those variables you need to worry about up here. See, it's looking for fact type, call name, SLO1. Now, back to the at mail function here. Uh, the two subject and message have been taken care of. And if you don't understand what these periods are doing here, that's, I believe, called concatenation. Uh, my English skills are not my strong suit, but uh, I believe that's what that's doing, is we're adding, each time you add a period, you are adding that onto the message variable. So by the end of it, if they filled out as everything here uh, correctly, then SLO1, column name, fact type, and SLO2, 3, and 4, if they filled all those out, will all be sent in the email. So that's the message here. The headers are something that uh, I usually just put the from details in. For, so just to let people, just to let whoever's getting the email know, this is from SLO survey. So um, it won't actually put the person's email, of course, because they haven't entered that. It'll just say SLO, SLO survey. And um, that's the basics of this one here. Now, I will mention the other one a little more um, because that's a little bit more complicated, just real quickly. Um, and also, I have an external style sheet here, which I guess I forgot to mention a little bit, but at some point, it's uh, referring to this line right here, my external style sheet. So as long as you have the reference to your correct style sheet, which mine is in a styles folder called styles.css, you can do all your HTML formatting through that. And we'll include all this in the, in the package, and you can see that. The last thing I want to mention just really quickly in my old kind of uh, bunk-looking uh, version here in the in the very first one I ever made or put together 
um, we had the browse uh, attaching a file. Now there's a, there's a whole different section here that you'll see added. There's a lot of different error checking in this one, um, but it's all similar. And at some point, you will see the stuff in the headers where there's an additional like MIME version. You see all this stuff here. And this is where it's adding that file in. So you really don't want to mess with that too much. And it continues all the way down, all the way down. And then I believe this data part is all part of that. So you kind of want to leave this, this part alone in general um, if, you want the, uh, if you want the attachment file to work still. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. It's not, it's not too much different. That's why we reused it. It's nice. So um, I guess that's all we have for you here. Just a quick sum up of how all this works. Um, once again, you might have to look at a few other tutorials to know how the rest of it works as far as individual PHP, HTML, and CSS.